Pray for peace from God the Father and from the Son Jesus. Be with all of us this morning. As we read the Gospel of John, and this is the very final message on the chapter 6 of John, we have been talking about the chapter 6 for the last uh, three weekends. <coughs> this is the last one, just for you to know, you might be tired of me preaching about the same chapter. But this is this is what we have, and this is how we, we do follow the readings of the weekend. Today, Jesus is telling his disciples and all those who are following him again. I am the bread of life. I guess we don't get tired of bread. We can eat bread any time of the day, any time of the week. It's one of those kind of food that we don't ever get tired of, even though we should not eat as much as we eat. <laughs> but yes. But that's why Jesus called himself the bread of life. Because it's a daily food, something that we have to have every day. So we can keep connected ourselves with God Almighty. So today, there is um, two situations in Jesus' life that I want to just uh, uh, mention and uh, preach about it. The first one is the words of the Jews when they come close to Jesus. So Jesus was preaching, and then he performed a miracle uh, about uh, transforming or changing the loaf and the fish, and multiplied it for a lot of people. So a lot of people saw that. They started following Jesus, and Jesus went to the other side of the lake, the lake of Genesaret. One side, there was a big Gentile population, and the other side, it was basically the Jew population. So he goes to this little city called Capernaum, and he starts teaching in the synagogue, the place where all the Jews get together for their Sabbath service. Now Jesus is saying, he is the bread of life that came from heaven, and before, before that, he told the disciples, and he, he, he thought, when he mentioned the fact that in the desert and during the crossing of the people uh, from Egypt to the Holy Land, God the Father sent manna from heaven so people would not perish in the desert. Now Jesus is using himself as bread, but with a difference. He is the bread of life that came from heaven, sent from the Father to suffer and die for all of us, to pay for all our sins. To be our Lord and our Savior, and you have to taste to try that bread if you want to live. This is the words of Jesus. And then the Jews come to him and say, This is a hard saying. And some of the translations would come as, This is a hard teaching. They didn't believe Jesus could come from heaven to be a Savior, a Lord. We were talking about this at the Evening Hill and Ladies Day this week and this past week. And some said it was too easy. It is just too easy to believe that Jesus came down from heaven to save my sins. They are looking for miracles. They are looking for big signs. But Jesus is just telling you just come to believe. People were trying coming to Jesus because they want to see Jesus performing more miracles, multiplying bread and fish, get them fed and fat. But that's not the message of Jesus. And when Jesus changed the speech, when he just changed the subject, for something more meaningful, then this is what people say to him. It is a hard teaching. It is a hard teaching. Do you ever go to the doctor and the doctor said, hey, if you want to leave a little bit more, you have to stop in bed. Did you ever heard that? Well, some of you I know. Some of you guys go to the doctor. But... Yes, yeah, sometimes it's just like that. You cannot just look into Jesus as a miracle maker. You have 
to see Jesus as the Lord and Savior. And this is what Jesus is preaching to the Jews in that synagogue. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, will live forever. It is not a hard word. It is not a hard saying. It is a promise. It is a promise. It's just like in the desert when people were walking, trying to find the Holy Land, walking, walking towards the, the Holy Land. If you don't eat the bread that God is sending, from heaven. You will perish in this desert. You will never make it to the Holy Land. Now Jesus is giving a promise. If you believe, if you believe in the living bread, you will never die. You, you will live forever. This is the promises of heaven. Jesus is giving heaven to people right then in that synagogue in Capernaum. It's the same as Jesus gave to all of us every day when we open the Bible and read the wonders of God. When we follow Jesus not just inside of our sanctuary singing and building for Him to praise, but when we do and act like Christians outside, then we are facing this bread of life and show it to others. He is our master and savior. It is not a hard teaching. It is good news for all of us that we can be saved even being sinners and sometimes doing not what God wants us to do. We can still be saved because of the living bread. Because of baptism, we try to taste the bread of life, and since then He is with us. But we have to live a daily baptism in our lives. This is what Jesus wants us to do. Once they come, they come and confront Jesus, and they just turn their back to Jesus because they don't want to. They are not looking for the living bread. They are looking for a miracle maker. Then Jesus turned to the disciples. And he asked him, how about you? How about you? What do you want to do? And Peter is standing and said, Lord, to whom should we go? You have the words of eternal life. There is no other place to go. I was a professor in Brazil, in one of the Lutheran universities. And every time I would explain about the life of Jesus, or tell people about Jesus, some of the students will come and say, what's the difference? Uh, professor, I can follow Muhammad, Muhammad. I can be a Buddhist. Everything is the same. They all have some kind of God or prophet. <coughs> In our world today, it's very easy for the people to follow many, many others. But Jesus Christ is the only one that has, and it is a better life. And I always will answer, but my Lord and my Savior Jesus Christ, He didn't stay in the tomb. If you go see the tomb of Muhammad or any other prophets, you will see the rest of the death. But my Lord and my Savior, He rose on the third day, and that's why I believe and I follow Him. We have to stand for Jesus, and this is the question Jesus asked the disciples. You have to stand for that truth. That there is one way to the Lord, to the Father. And the way is Jesus Christ. As He said, I am the way, the life, and the truth. And no one will go to the Father except from me. This is the truth of the gospel this morning. The bread of life is telling us to stand, stand for Him. I was talking with uh, Brandon, and as he came today this morning, uh, talking about how many taxes our church uh, don't have to give preaching the Word of God, and also how many members the traditional churches, Lutheran churches, are losing the last decade. Some of the churches 
uh, are losing millions of members. Our church lost about 500,000, 500,000 in the last decade or so. We have before us a big challenge in our days to stand for Jesus and to just say what Peter said, Lord, to whom sh sh shall we go? You are the only one that has the words of eternal life. This is our challenge, to confess our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, but also follow Him and taste the bread of life every single day so we can get the strength and faith to continue following Him. As the Apostle Paul today in our reading of the epistle said so well, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. <coughs> Paul is quoting a reading of Isaiah in the Old Testament, when Isaiah brings the promise of Jesus Christ to the world. Arise, arise, and Christ, and Christ will shine on you. This is what we have to do to save this world lost of their sins. Our Master is calling and inviting us to witness His name, His love, so more people can come and face the better life and make it to the eternal life. Remember the words, and this is the last words I want to tell you today. The last and the first words of Jesus. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. So let's continue to try and taste this wonderful bread. The bread that brings life to all of us. And also to those who are still living. In and my place. May God bless us all. In Jesus' name. Amen.